Uh, solving Rubik's Cube and multilingual printing using LEGO EV3. So, to start this presentation, how many of you here can solve a Rubik's Cube? Nobody? Okay, one person? Okay, well, this presentation is going to be about solving the Rubik's Cubes and also multilingual printing. Who am I? My name is Sarab Narain and I'm 12 years old. I'm from Hopkins Junior High and I'm in seventh grade. When I was little, I used to open everything in my house from telephones to computers to desktops to flashlights. I used to open everything. When I was in third grade, I, I loved to build computers. I built my first computer, which was running Linux. Since last year, I've been uh, I've been solving Rubik's Cubes, and I got addicted, so I started solving the 3x3, 3x3x3, the 4x4x4, the 5x5x5, and the 6x6x6, also the 7x7x7. I, I can also solve some irregular puzzles, such as the Megamix, the Kirby Copter, and the Pyraminx. When I grow up, I want to be an electronics engineer. I have two robots that I've created. One is a Lego robot that can solve a Rubik's Cube. It's based on David Gilday's Mighty Cuber design, but it's been modified to run more efficiently. It also has improved color detection. I also have a multilingual printer. It's based on Ralph Medley's design. I've digitized three languages so far, English, Spanish, and Braille. I've extended the range to print complete solid alphabets, so I can print um, in English from A through Z, I can print from Spanish and from A through Z, including the accents, and I can print in Braille. These robots are all made by the EV3. The EV3 is a microcontroller which controls the sensors and the motors. It is the brain of the robot. The EV3 is programmed by a modified version of LabVIEW, which is from Lego. These robots are made from Lego Technic, which are plastic pieces with tiny holes for them. I've used two kits to make both of these robots. Here is the Rubik's Cube solving robot. You can see there is an arm which flips the Rubik's Cube, a turntable which turns the Rubik's Cube, and a scan arm which scans the Rubik's Cube. And you can also see the EV3 module itself. The, sc the scan arm is moved by one single medium-sized motor. The turntable is moved by one large motor, and the arm is moved by one large motor also. You can also see the base of the robot is made out of four sprockets. This Rubik's Cube robot uses an F2L method to solve the Rubik's Cube, which consists of solving the first two layers. This, this robot can solve one Rubik's Cube in less than 100 seconds and 30 moves. This robot uses one hand to hold the Rubik's Cube. And it has one turntable to orient the cube in different positions. It also uses a color sensor to scan each individual square to solve the Rubik's Cube. This Rubik's Cube machine has two large motors and one medium motor. One large motor is used for the arm, the second large motor is used for the, uh, the turntable, and the last medium motor is used for the scan arm. Some problems I faced with the Rubik's Cube solving robot. The arm sometimes did not turn the cube properly. My solution was to make the arm go slow and thorough so it could turn the Rubik's Cube. The turntable sometimes did not move accurately. My simple solution was to decrease the speed of the motor or to change the gear ratio. I, I chose to decrease the speed of the motor for more preciseness. Sometimes the scan arm did not calibrate correctly, making the scan arm motor go backwards too fast. This made the robot failed to scan the Rubik's Cube properly. My simple solution was to make it look for a gray bar on the Rubik's Cube robot so it could stop. Sometimes the robot moved vigorously and moved by itself while solving the Rubik's Cube. My so solution was to add bigger tires for more stability. Some future work on the Rubik's Cube solver. I will add four arms instead of one so the robot can apply more loop moves in less time. I will also use an enhanced version of F2L, which consists of 41 algorithms to solve and permute the Rubik's Cube. I will also use a webcam to solve 
to scan the whole face of Rubik's Cube instead of one side, hence faster soft times for the Rubik's Cube robot. Here's the multilingual printer. As you can see, it consists of a pen, a printer head, some weights, and paper, and also three motors, and an EV3. The two motors are large and one motor is medium. One large motor controls the pen, pen head, which makes it go up or down. The other large motor controls the paper intake and outtake mechanism. The medium motor controls the printer head's left and right movements. This multilingual printer can print in three languages, which are English, Spanish, and Braille. Currently, I'm working on the Mandarin version. All the fonts have been digitized on graph paper. And this robot prints on calculator paper, which is paper that some calculators can print on. This robot uses a print head to move the pen left and right. It also uses four tires to move the paper back and forth. It uses two large motors, which one, one large motor controls the paper intake and outtake. The other one controls the pen up and pen down. And the last medium motor controls the pen head going left and right. Here's how I plot the letters to form. Here's to form a font. Here's the letter G. I graph it on graph paper and put each point. Where the pen is pointing at right now is the first point it starts from. It goes to the left, it goes down, it goes to the right, it comes back up, and then it goes to the left again. Here are some problems that I faced with the Rubik's Cube solving robot. Sometimes the calculator paper did not come out towards one side or the other. It didn't come out in the middle. The, the paper got crumpled and crushed. My simple solution was to add a paper guide so the paper could move in a straight line. Sometimes the pen was not pressing against the paper, so it could not write. My solution was to add more weights or to make a stronger pen holder that forced the pen to be put on the paper. Ugh. Uh, another problem was that when the paper went inside and outside, the printer got jammed. My solution was to let the paper be pre-cut or add free rotating rollers, which allowed the paper to go in and out. Here is some future work on the multilingual printer. I'll use, less pa I'll use letter paper size instead of calculator paper so I can put more let put more words on one line and have more words on one piece of paper. I will also use a keyboard to type in the letters directly to the EV3 with the USB port inside. This would allow conversion of English to Braille or English to Spanish because I would be using an English keyboard to convert to those two languages. I would also add a light center to the head of the printer so it could not only print but scan. It, it could scan Braille fonts and convert them into Spanish or English. I'll also program the printer to print in more languages such as Hindi, Mandarin, or Arabic. Do you have any questions or comments? You can email me at my email, which is curious.sarab at gmail.com. Or you can go to my website, which is http colon forward slash forward slash robosarab.weebly.com. Or you can meet me at my booth. Now we will be scrambling the now we'll be scrambling the Rubik's cube. So does anybody want to scramble it right now? Okay. Oh. I'm twelve. Yeah. Does anybody here have any questions? No? Okay.
Okay, so right now the Rubik's Cube robot is scanning the Rubik's Cube. It scans five sides of the Rubik's Cube. It does not have to scan the sixth side because it, it already knows that there are nine of each color and it can find out the bottom, bottom side automatically. It's found the solution, so now it is going to take it over. Thank you.